The original Xbox is Microsoft's first gaming console. It was released on November 15, 2001 in North America. It's part of the sixth generation of gaming consoles and was in competition with the Sony PlayStation 2 and Nintendo GameCube at the time of its release. Arguably, it competed with the Sega Dreamcast with regard to consumers who bought newer consoles less frequently, but the Dreamcast was released two years earlier, so it wasn't widely regarded as a competitor. The launch of the Xbox broke records at 1.5 million units sold before the end of the year. Over the course of its lifetime, it sold 24 million units worldwide. The Xbox had very similar hardware to PCs at the time. The Xbox's operating system is a variant of Windows 2000 and uses many Windows APIs. Some popular games for the original Xbox include Dead or Alive 3, Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell, and Halo Combat Evolved. The Xbox had superior graphics capabilities compared to other 6th generation consoles. The original Xbox has a 32-bit Intel Pentium 3 CPU running at 733 MHz. It has 64 MB of RAM. The memory bus speed is 200 MHz. The GPU is a 233 MHz NVIDIA chip capable of 20 billion floating point operations per second and around 971,000 triangles per frame. The original Xbox supports progressive scan and up to 1080i high definition output. It has composite, component, S-video, and even HDMI with an adapter. The NVIDIA audio chip in the console is capable of Dolby and DTS surround, although the startup sound itself is only in stereo due to the detection lag of Dolby surround. The audio chip supports up to 64 sound channels and can support up to 256 stereo sounds at a time. The Xbox has a DVD-ROM drive capable of up to 5x speed. Its hard drive comes in 8GB or 10GB. Other hardware features of the Xbox include an Ethernet plug and four USB ports. It supports DVD playback with an optional infrared remote control add-on. The BIOS is only 256 kilobytes in size. With firmware this compact, it becomes clear that a pre-recorded startup sound and animation could not possibly be stored within that. The entire boot animation, both video and audio, are generated on the fly. Because all of the BIOS firmware is compiled into machine code, I wasn't able to directly access any of the program code that generates it. Also, even though the startup sound does contain a few very, very small audio samples, I could not extract them from the BIOS. Thanks to some information provided by the startup sound's original creator, however, I was able to recreate some of them. Brian Schmidt is the creator of the original Xbox startup sound. Mr. Schmidt has been in the industry since 1987 and started out creating audio for pinball machines and arcade games. He was the program manager of the Xbox Audio and Voice Technologies division at Microsoft from 1999 to 2008. He designed most of the audio for both the original Xbox and the Xbox 360. According to him, it's generated entirely by custom code with the exception of a few very small audio samples he created. He wrote an interesting article in 2011 explaining what he did to generate this iconic sound. After the Xbox's system code and kernel and the boot animation's 3D assets were put into the firmware, only about 25 kilobytes out of the 256 were still available. Having extensive experience in designing sound for limited storage, Mr. Schmidt wrote custom code for a basic sequencer and some tone generator functions including saw, sine, and white noise. For some very small audio samples, Mr. Schmidt created a couple of explosive sounds from thunder and a cannon firing. For the ending jingle, he added a glockenspiel sample and enhanced it with a generated sine wave tone. Additionally, he wrote a function to reverse the thunder sample. He took advantage of the MCPX chip's features and programmed frequency and envelope filters to modify these procedural sounds and small audio samples. 
The startup sequence is 8 seconds long, during which the real-time 3D graphics are rendered and the code generates the startup sound. The article by Mr. Schmidt was very useful while I was researching this. I will put a link to it in the description. As I've mentioned before, all of this, down to the Xbox logo itself, is generated using real-time 3D and vector graphics. I have recreated it here in high definition for the purposes of this presentation, and what I've made is not 100% true to the original. By the way, because the startup animation is procedural, it will never look exactly the same way twice. That green plasma blob animates ever so slightly differently each time. Back to the startup sound. Brian Schmidt wrote this function to generate the low frequency bass sweep in the beginning of the sound. It uses a sawtooth wave played through a low pass filter which slowly opens up over the duration of the note. And for the explosive sounds, some very small and low sample rate thunder and cannon sounds were digitized and mixed in with procedurally generated white noise to enhance the higher frequencies. Everything was then run through frequency filters. That pulsing energy blob sound is a sawtooth wave run through a low-pass filter and some pitch modulation. And again, that ending jingle is a glockenspiel sample mixed in with a generated sine wave to get it some more tone. The whole sequence uses nine audio tracks. You know, being a professional programmer and a part-time audio designer, I can really appreciate this hyper-efficient sound design, especially using the limited storage space available in the BIOS firmware. There is definitely an art to transforming basic, procedurally generated waveforms and noise into complex soundscapes. Of course I had to attempt recreating this. Although I didn't write any code to procedurally generate the sounds, I used software synths and audacity to put together sounds that roughly approximate the ones used in the original. The result is not a 100% accurate reproduction of the original, but it's somewhat close. I recreated the thunder, white noise, and reverse thunder samples in audacity. They aren't completely identical to the original samples used, but they come close after using some of the filtering and modulation techniques Mr. Schmidt described. Alright, we'll start with the short jingle here at the end. The notes shown here are not correct because this was a non-standard tuning. I had to retune the synth and attempt to match what I heard in the startup. Now the real notes for the jingle are B flat, F, a lower octave B flat, then F and B flat again. I know I've already mentioned this a couple times before, but this glockenspiel instrument here is backed by a sine wave to give it some more tone. Next, the synth bass for the pulsing sounds. It's just a standard Roland synth bass, which is just a sawtooth wave with some filtering and volume envelope. And the sweeping bass here is just another sawtooth wave, but with a longer filter sweep. I set up Z3TA here to use the modulation wheel on the keyboard to control the filter. Alright, and now we have the thunder samples. I had to recreate these from my own audio library since I couldn't extract them from the BIOS. It's just a clap of thunder mixed in with a bit of white noise. The reversed thunder here is the same. It's just the thunder sample in reverse with a different envelope applied. Now I have yet another sine wave played at a very low pitch underneath everything. It just kind of beefs it up, and I did hear it in the original audio, too. Last of all, that wobbly, gurgling sound. I found a preset in Z3TA that I just kind of tweaked a bit to get a similar effect. without having the exact noise samples and being able to implement all of the code used to generate the sounds, I couldn't reproduce it absolutely perfectly, but it was close enough for this demonstration. 
Here's my recreation again. And here's the original for comparison. Look, I know I probably left out some things. I have trouble hearing sounds above 10 kilohertz, so there might be some high-pitched noises that I just didn't hear. There's probably also some of that reverse thunder toward the end that I didn't put in. And yet again, uh, these are the actual notes played for that glockenspiel melody. They are again B flat, F, and an octave lower B flat, then F and B flat again, and then that pseudo echo there at the end is just B flat twice more. Okie dokie. Here's a 3D model I used to recreate the startup animation in high definition. I just used a low quality analog capture from an Xbox for reference. It's not exactly the same as the model used in the BIOS firmware as I just kinda eyeballed it. So uh, I used shape keys in Blender for the plasma ball effect and then added the particle effects, glow, and light rays in Adobe After Effects. I also used a lot of volume lighting for the fog effects. There are probably a lot of little details I missed from the original, but the major animated bits are the rings sliding in on the pipes and the small turrets that come up after the base platform rises and spins. So that was kind of fun to make. Well, that's the story of the Xbox startup sequence and audio. I hope you found it informative and interesting. This console startup is perhaps the most interesting to me because of the real-time synthesis involved and the minimal use of audio samples. There was a lot of engineering that went into this console. It was a lot of fun getting a little peek into what went into it. Anyway, thanks to everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.